Hello everyone, welcome to another session of AP Human Geography with Mr. Elrond. Today we're going to continue on in Unit 7, and this is another video in a series of discussions on this idea of urban systems. Uh, if you remember in the previous videos we've been talking about urban systems really as they relate to each other, kind of on this urban hierarchy. We talked about the rank size rule, we talked about global cities and world cities, and today what we're going to look at is a similar concept, but it really kind of speaks more to the evolution of the importance of cities based upon certain functions of that city. Uh, so what we're going to look at is what's called Borchert's model of urban evolution, and basically this is just a, uh, not necessarily a system, but a discussion on the importance of particular cities and how uh, as time goes on, certain cities are going to be important based upon certain characteristics. So it's a study of U.S. cities uh, specifically, and of course that's going to be one of the criticisms of this particular model, and necessarily that doesn't apply to uh, other places because it's specific to the United States, its history, and kind of its evolution as a country. Uh, so anyway, it's looking at uh, for it's looking at a study of U.S. cities, and really we're looking at four different time periods of cities and the significance of those cities. And then uh, what Borchardt's going to do is he focuses primarily on the different transportation methods and how that's going to impact not just the city itself, but also which cities happen to be important during that particular time period. So I'm just going to run through these particular periods uh, relatively quickly and uh, have a brief discussion there at the end. So anyway, uh, the first stage is called the Sail Wagon Era. You can see the time period there, 1790 to 1830. Uh, and so these are the very early American colonial, well I guess they wouldn't be colonial cities at this point, but the early American cities that are established primarily around ports and waterways. Uh, some may, maybe some slightly inland cities and things that are along, uh, along coastal towns. But again, you know, primarily cities that are based primarily upon uh, coastal, uh, coastal trade. Uh, still goods that are coming over from Europe and things like that. And of course those are a lot of our initial established cities in the United States. So if you look at cities like Boston, Philadelphia, New York, uh, if you look at Savannah, Charleston. So anyway, uh, all of those are important cities when we look at the early American cities. And so that's where, uh, that's where they're established and located. And, and that's based on primarily because uh, the main mo mode of transportation for moving economic goods and things like that is going to be uh, boats, uh, either through the ocean or along rivers. Stage two is going to be 1830 to 1870, and this is what they call the iron, the iron horse cities. Uh, and this is when we start to get a little bit more focus uh, on steam. We have steam engines, uh, and then we have the development of steam boats. We also have uh, more development of um, of rivers and canals uh, as a, as a method of transportation and transporting goods. And so that's going to be the main focus there. In, uh, those types of cities as they begin to develop. So again, you look at some early cities uh, that begin to, to establish in the United States, things like Boston, Boston Harbor, and of course how significant that city was to uh, the development of the United States. In stage three, we have what's called the Steel Rail Age, or the Steel Rail, or steel rail Epoch, uh, 1870 to 1920. Uh, and this is going to be cities that are, uh, that are gonna be based upon either steel production or we're talking about the development of trains and train travel in the United States and important cities that begin to uh, develop around uh, train transportation. Uh, and so uh, we begin to see the emergence of new industrial cities uh, and those cities are becoming uh, more important in the United States. Then you have what's called, uh, you then have stage four, 1920 to the present, which is called the car and plane era or car and plane epic. Uh, and that's, of course, going to be cities that are established along uh, car travel and then also uh, air travel. And, of course, uh, one, of the m one of the more important developments during this particular time period is going to be the interstate highway system. Uh, and this particular era is characterized primarily by sprawl, uh, suburban sprawl, and then also uh, the use of methods of personal transportation. So we begin to see a shift. Uh, in important cities, to, in significant cities that are cities that are focused on uh, the development of suburban areas, typically cheap land that surrounds a central city. Plus, you look at uh, things where people are wanting to go voluntarily because of climate. Uh, obviously, Los Angeles, one of the first uh, really uh, motor cities or auto cities that's developed. Uh, you know, a lot of the cheap land that was available out in California was a draw for people after World War II. Uh, and of course helped to get out there by uh, the establishment of the uh, interstate highway system. 
So you notice that each of these uh, particular stages and focuses on these particular cities is going to be uh, based on a method of transportation. You have to consider uh, not only the method of transportation, you also have to think about the change in economic development that's taking place. Uh, those original cities are going to be cities that are based on uh, primarily water-based trade, then the industrial cities are centers of production, and we've talked a little bit about this uh, prior to. And then these last cities are going to be the cities that can develop really anywhere uh, because they're going to be more service-based cities, trade-based cities, but you know the trade is going to be mainly service-based. Uh, and so uh, cities can be established wherever, you know, not only wherever the jobs are, but wherever uh, people have access to, and also people kind of have more choice uh, because jobs can move to multiple locations because of weather, uh, because of conducive uh, working environments in terms of uh, you know, right to work states, things along those lines. Um, but again, also a lot of cities begin to develop because of things like cheap land uh, that is available. So people want to live outside the urban areas, they can travel. They can travel on a regular basis to the urban area, either for entertainment or working purposes, uh, things like this. Uh, but basically one of the ideas, one of the important elements of Borchardt's model uh, is this idea that the importance of cities is going to be based on location, it's going to be based on comparative advantage, and it's also going to be based on its economic function. Uh, and so what we find is that cities that are not able to evolve themselves over these various time periods are cities that are going to go away in terms of importance. Uh, some great examples of that would be the city of Detroit. Detroit obviously used to be one of the most important cities in the country, one of the most uh, flourishing cities during the country during the industrial period. And because it couldn't evolve itself over time to stay relevant and change kind of the economic center of its, of its city, uh, of course uh, Detroit today is, we know, pretty much a failing city and it's you know, almost disappeared in terms, of, uh, in terms of its former self. You look at cities like uh, New York City, that's been able to evolve and, and stay relevant. New York, of course, initially a trading city, then it became an industrial city, and then it evolved again uh, with the new era into a trade-based city again, with a service-based trade. Um, and so because New York's been able to evolve itself, it's been able to remain relevant uh, in the United States and even in the world. So all those things are significant. Some good, uh, some good picture here is you have Chicago. Chicago is important during the, uh, during the steel rail era. Um, not only located on, uh, not only uh, located on the Great Lakes, but also connected by the uh, the St. Lawrence Seaway, the Erie Canal. So an important uh, city in that regard, but also important because uh, it was part of the railway hub for the Midwest. A lot of goods would come out that way uh, from the east and be connected to the west. And uh, Westerners, especially cattle, could trade their cattle in Chicago, which could be sent back east. So definitely an important city there. And of course, a part of the concentric zone model, which you'll learn about later in the unit. Pittsburgh, obviously one of the more important uh, steel production cities in the United States. Uh, and so, of course, connected by both river and by rail. Uh, so uh, some of those sprawl cities that we're talking about, you have LA, Los Angeles, you see the, uh, you see the sprawl there with the central city. Uh, and then, you know, low levels of density as you move out, all these houses and things along those lines. You have Phoenix, Phoenix, Arizona. A lot of people point to Atlanta and Phoenix as some of the uh, some of the cities that are that are worse for sprawl, uh, and you know they point to those. And of course, any of these uh, any of these large metropolitan areas are going to be impacted by uh, the automobile and people's ability to access the suburbs as well as the central city. Well, that's all we have time for this time. Uh, next time we'll be looking at the uh, contemporary functional characteristics of cities or the functional characteristics of contemporary cities. So if you found that to be helpful, if you have any questions, leave those in the comment box below, and I hope to see you next time.